Praise the Lord. If you are glad to be in church this morning, jam your hands together for Jesus. A hallelujah. God bless you. Let's rise to our feet. Let us rise to our feet. Let us all rise to our feet. I want to take that song that the choir ministered earlier and I want you to sing with me. Oh God, follow Glory be to the Lord. He reigns. Ha! Glory be to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. I want you to sing it one more time with me. Glory be to the Lord. He reigns. Glory be to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Glory be to the Lord. Who are no me, oh, Cassidari de Macashi de Dimasinda? Who are me, sir? If the living soul is right here, open your mouth and sing unto the Lord. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen is a response to every prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give thanks to you. We give you glory. For the privilege and the opportunity to be before you this morning. For it's only the living that can praise you. For there is no praises in the grave. We thank you Lord for making us a living soul in the land of the living. 
for yet another day, O oh God. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray by your spirit that by your spirit, O oh Lord, we are moving to a new level in the name of Jesus. I say you are moving to a new level. I say you are moving to a new level. I say you are moving to a new level in the name of Jesus. As we seek you, O Lord, this morning, grant us understanding of your word in the name of Jesus. And everyone be blessed through this word. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. If you are glad to be in church this morning, jam your hands together for Jesus. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. For he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the I am that I am. He is God yesterday. He is God today. He is for God forevermore. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want you to welcome someone by your left and by your right to church this morning. I need to see you welcome someone by your left and by your right. God bless you. God bless you. I miss you all too. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You are looking gorgeous this morning. We thank God for this opportunity. It's our anniversary. And it's a Thanksgiving Sunday. Praise the Lord. In the last six Sundays, we have been talking on a team, on our team for the year, a new level. A new level. So I'm going to continue on that team this morning as we bring our seven Sundays of glory to our close. So I titled my message this morning, A New Level, A New Devil. A New Level, A New Devil. Second Samuel, Second Samuel, Chapter 5, 2 Samuel chapter 5, from verse 17 to 20. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 5, from verse 17 to 20. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So if you have your Bibles and they are still in your bag, that is not the right place for them to be. It is time for you to bring out your Bibles from your bag so that you can read with me. And if you don't have your Bible, just look up to the screen so that you can read along with me. Praise the Lord. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, In everything give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. The Bible says, in all things, in everything, no matter what position or situation or circumstances you find yourself, he says, Give thanks to God. Have an attitude of praise. Have an attitude of praise. Don't let your situation, the present situation, your past situation determine your praise level. Don't let your present situation, your past situation, don't let it determine your praise level. When all things are good with you, when everything is right with you, don't just praise God alone. When things are not feeling too right, don't lay back and say, I won't praise God. Remember, God wants you and I to praise him. No matter what the situation you find yourself, always give thanks to God. 
always give thanks to God. So this morning, I'm also going to give thanks to God. That is why I will say, I give thanks to God for how far he has brought us. I give thanks to God for where we are. And I thank God for where he's taking you and I to. I give thanks to God for how far he has come with us. I thank God for where we are right now. And we give thanks to God for where he's taking us to. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You and I may not know tomorrow. We may not know the future. But we have a God that is all-knowing and all-powerful. You didn't hear me the first time. You and I may not know tomorrow. We may not be able to see into the future. But you and I serve a living God that is all-knowing and all-powerful. That is why the word of God is coming to us this day. That is why the message of God is coming to you this day. To encourage you. To assure you. Just as he has said in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. The Lord say, for I know the thought I have towards you. Say as the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. The Lord says, for I know the thought I have towards you. Say as the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil. And to give you a future and a hope. It doesn't matter how bad you have started this year. It doesn't matter what this last two months has been for you. God is promising you a new level. God is promising you a new level of hope and fulfillment. I thought somebody would say amen. I thought somebody would say amen. The past two months might have been so stressful for you. The past two months might be so difficult for you. But God is saying to you right now that I'm promising you an exciting tomorrow. I say God is promising you an exciting tomorrow. He's promising you a beautiful tomorrow. If you believe it, shout a loud amen. This year, God is taking you to another level of relationship with him. He's taking you to another level of relationship with him that will propel you to that new height that God has destined for you. God is taking you to a new level. Let me say this to you. If you have lived long enough, if you have lived long enough, you will come to realize at some point in your life, at some stage in your life, at some times in your life, Life itself will present you a bittersweet experience. <laughs> Life itself will present you a bittersweet experience. A bitter experience resulting from those challenges you have gone through. Those painful memories. Those bitter experiences resulting from the challenges that you have been through and the painful memory of things that has happened to you. And some other times, life will present you a sweet memories, sweet experiences, resulting from the accomplishments in life. Those things you have accomplished. When you buy a new car, it's a sweet thing. When you build that house, when you get married, when you, when you, when you give birth to a child, those are things that you accomplish. They bring you sweet experiences in life. Sometimes the memories of joy, of peace, of pleasure, of gladness that fills our heart, it brings you excitement. All these things brings you excitement. But I've come to tell you, life will always present you with a sweet and a bitter experience. This year, 2024, is not an exception. The, the year has already begun and a lot of us are already having our first year of what the year has for us. This year 2024 is coming with its own challenges. It's coming with its own difficulties. But as a child of God, as children of God, God wants you to navigate your way to that new level. Where you are is not where God has destined for you. 
Where you are now is not where God wants you to be. For you to get to that new level, you need to navigate your path. You need to navigate your way to get to that new level. Let me say this to you. If you have ever traveled before, either by road, by air or by sea, you will come to realize at some point in the journey, the journey can be sometimes stressful, it can be bumpy and difficult sometimes. And at the other time, that same journey can become, can become very smooth, very, very, very sweet, and it's something you are always looking forward to. So for you to attain the new level God has destined for you in this year, 2024, we all, you and I, must embark on the journey. And that journey to that new level, sometimes it can be bumpy. Sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes it can be challenging. But God says, before you can get to that new level, the level I have destined for you, the level I have assigned for you, you have to navigate your way. You now have to pray your way to get to that new level. Praise the Lord. A new level means a higher ground. A new level means a higher ground. And that new level attracts new challenges. That new level attracts a new devil. That new level that you are praying for, we always attract a new devil. Open with me to our text this morning, 2 Samuel. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5. Verse 17 to 20. I want you to read carefully with me here. I want you to read carefully with me here. For this story is a story of David. It sums up all my message to you this morning. Here, this is what the Bible says. It said, now, 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 when the Philistine heard that they have appointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephim. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Question. Will you deliver them into my hand? Another question. And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistine into your hands. So David went to Baal-perazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broke through my enemy for me, like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal-perazim. Amen. Amen. Hmm. I would like to rewind a little to take you to the heart of this story. You won't really understand what this scripture is trying to tell you. I will rewind so that you can have a deep understand, understanding of what the Bible is saying. Hear this. When David was still a very young boy, Remember that he fought alongside the armies of Israel. At that time, David was not has not been recruited or was never recruited into the army. One way or the other, David found himself in the battlefront. And he was able to defeat Goliath. After the defeat of Goliath, in the eyes of the Philistine, David was nobody. David was of no significance. David was just one of the fighters in Israel. For at that time, Saul was the king over Israel. Though David may not matter in the eyes of the Philistine, but back home in Israel, David has started gaining popularity. While the popularity of Saul was diminishing, and Saul decided, he decided to go against David to kill him. If you flip back to 1 Samuel, 
about verse 27 or chapter 27. David said to himself, let me flee to Philistine. Let me feel to flee to Philistine because if I stay here in the land of Israel, Saul will seek to kill me. Remember, it's the same David that killed Goliath. Goliath is a warrior in Philistine. And now David, uh, Saul was after David and David said to himself, let me flee to Philistine. David fled Israel. He left Israel and went to the land of the Philistines. He and about 600 men, they dwelt in Philistine for over one year. Remember, he still the same David that caught the head of the Goliath. Dave, the same David went to Philistine and they did nothing to him. He lived in that land for over one year until he heard that Saul was dead. After the death of Saul, David returned to Israel. At that time, the land of the house of Judah anointed David king over Judah. By the time David was coming back, there has been civil war. The Israelites that we used to know as one nation has divided into two. We now have a southern Israel and a northern Israel. The southern Israel crowned, anointed David king over Judah and Benjamin. Then the remaining tribes of Israel up north, they decided not to crown David king. David ruled over Judah for over seven years. For over seven years, David was king over Judah. At that point, the kingship of David did not matter to the Philistines. Listen to me, I'm going somewhere. The kingship of David over Judah mattered nothing to Philistines. First, David went to the land of Philistine. They didn't kill him. He was crowned king over Judah. Nothing happened. If you fast forward now, after seven years, to 2 Samuel that we just read, the northern Israel now decided to crown David king over northern Israel. Meaning that immediately the northern Israel crowned David over Israel. It means now David was now king over the entire nation of Israel. Now Bible says, when the Philistines had, when the Philistines had that David has been crowned king over the entire Israel, they decided to kill him. Until David did not attain the destination, the level God wanted him to be, nothing happened. David never attracted a new devil. When David was just a boy, he never attracted a new devil. When David was crowned king over Judah, David never attracted a new devil. But when David was crowned king over Israel, David attracted a new devil. Let me say this to you. As long as you remain in that one room apartment, you will not attract a new devil. <laughs> It's not a prayer. I'm just saying to you. As long as you remain on that great level and you don't go anywhere, no promotion, you cannot attract a new level, a new devil. In your family, as you don't matter anything in your family, you, no, you, are, you don't matter anything. You are of no significance. You cannot attract a new devil. Nobody cares about you. As long as you are not married, you remain single in your family. You cannot attract a new devil. You are jobless. No job. And you are crying up and down. And you thought people are sorry for your situation. You cannot attract a new devil. But when you decide to change status quo, <laughs> when you decide to move from the level you are to another level, it's a new challenge and it's a new devil. I will share another story with you quickly. It's the story of Adam. How Adam attracted a new devil. The Garden of Eden was a new level for Adam. The Garden of Eden was a new level for Adam and that is where God was. 
And that is what where God has destined Adam to be. For in that garden, Adam is going to fulfill purpose. Only in the garden of Adam, Eden, that Adam was going to fulfill purpose. Remember, when God created man, when God created man, Adam was living in peace without trouble. Adam was living in peace without trouble until God decided to take Adam into the new level. And that new level for Adam is the garden. And that garden will attract a new devil. Open with me. Open with me. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden, and there he put the man who he had formed. God planted a garden. Let me say this to you quickly. There are some of you, when God has placed you there, stay where God has put you. When God created Adam, he did not give him the entire Eden. He gave Adam the garden. He did not give him Eden. Don't try to be everybody. God will give you your own fear of influence. God will always provide you with your own garden. Stay in your garden. Remember what I said. Adam did not attract a new devil while he was still nobody. But when God decided to move Adam from where he was into the garden, he became noticeable. God moved him from obscurity to notability. How did Adam get to the garden? How did the Adam, Adam, Adam get to the garden? The first verse 8 did not tell us how he got there. But if you flip down to verse 15 of the same chapter 2, the Bible says, Then the Lord God took the man, underline the word took, underline the word took, the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend for it. When I check the word took, to take, up in the dictionary, it means to lay hold. It means to lay hold, to grasp. I'm sure God did not call Adam, come, 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 bring your hand. I'm taking you to the garden. No. I'm very sure that the Spirit of God led Adam into the garden. How do I know it? The same way God led Adam to the garden before he fell was the same way God sent him out of the garden. You didn't get me. Adam was on one level until God moved him to the level God wants him to be. That the garden is the place of destiny for Adam. And there God was going to give him an assignment. Can't you remember? Don't you remember that? Until Adam entered that garden, God did not discuss anything with him. But the very moment he entered into the garden, God began to tell him, you can eat this, you can eat that. God began to tell him, tend for this garden. Work on this garden. God gave him an assignment in the garden. Outside the garden, there was no place. When you pray for a new level, it will come with a new challenge. When God moved Adam to that new level, which is the garden, it attracted a new devil, which is the serpent. We know how the story ended. We know that Adam could not survive the test of a new, of the new, um, of the of the new level, and he fell. And God drove him out of the new level because he failed the temptation that awaits him in the new level. There will always be a temptation. There will be a test for you in that new level. That new level you are praying for, there will be a test for you. And if you don't pass the test, you cannot maintain on that level. Adam fell from grace. That was why it was okay for God to say, from dust you were made and to dust you will return. For because you came from somewhere, you will return there when you fell. Adam was coming from nowhere when God took him somewhere. So when Adam failed, God returned him to where he was coming from. God made Adam from the dust and he became a living soul when he received the breath of life. 
And when he failed, the Bible says, and God said, you will return to where you have come from. Just as God has taken Adam into the garden, he sent him out where he failed. The question is this morning, why should you aspire for a new level? Why should you pray for a new level? Let me share four reasons for you, with you. One, to fulfill purpose. The reason why you must go to a new level is to fulfill purpose. Number two, for a greater work. God is calling on you and I to a greater works. Number three, that is the will of God for you. That is the will of God for us. Number four, it is where you, when you get to that new level, you get a new responsibility. Adam did not receive a new responsibility until he entered into that new level. So what are the challenges of a new level? What are the challenges of a new level? When you desire to move to a new level, a new level will bring opposition. It will bring opposition. A new level will bring new challenges. A new level will come with a new devil. Hear me. The devil is not going to sit back and roll a red carpet for you to walk to your new level. You didn't hear me. The devil is not going to roll red carpet for you to march to that new level without opposition. Devil is going to press every stop button. The kingdom of hell, the kingdom of darkness are going to do everything to stagnate you. The devil will do all he wants to keep you unmarried. To make sure you don't have a blissful home. To make sure you don't get a new job. To make sure if you get that job, you don't get promoted. The devil will do everything. As long as you have not gotten to that new level, you cannot attract a new devil. So the question is, how can I overcome the challenges of a new level. How can I overcome the new devil of a new level? Number one, focus on God. Keep your gaze, keep your focus on God. Number one, keep your gaze and your focus on God. Yield to his purpose. Yield to the purpose of God. Yield to the pleasure of God. Yield to the goal of God. Let your goal, let your pleasure, let your purpose be for God. Let your focus, let your gaze be on God alone. Make sure in all that you do, there are some of you, you don't have the money that you desire, that you want right now. But let me tell you, that money you are praying for, when you get it, is going to come with a new devil. There are things that you want to do in your flesh that you don't have money to do now. When you receive that money, when you see that money, it will come with a new devil. Are you going to overcome it? Number two, turn the battle to God. The battle is not yours. Just turn it to God. It's not yours. Turn it to the Lord. It's the Lord's battle. Turn it to him. Turn it to him. Number three, rely on the Holy Spirit for you to overcome the new devil of a new level. Turn it to the Holy Spirit. Invite him into your life. I have a Bible scriptures for this. The book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, 11 and 12. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against power, and against the ruler of darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Amen. God has declared that this year 2024 is a year of new level. But you need to brace up for it. For that is where God wants you to be. And that is where God is. God wants you to be where he is. The new level is where God dwells. And God wants you to be in that new level. 
I declare this morning, as you are moving to a new level, it will be a new level of prosperity for you. You didn't hear me. I say, I declare concerning you this morning, as you brace up for that new level, I say it will be a new level of prosperity for you. A new level of relationship with God. A new level of spiritual endowment. A new level of financial success. In the name of Jesus. I say it will be a new level of prosperity. I say it will be a new level of spiritual empowerment. And a new level of financial success. In the name of Jesus. If this is your prayer, shout a loud amen. If this is your prayer, shout a loud amen. If this is your prayer, shout a loud amen. If you have been blessed with this short message, let me hear you shout a believing amen. Rise onto your feet as we pray together.